All right, happy Monday. I'm going to be recording our work from home video tutorials here. We are continuing to work on our type design and poster composition. <laughs> and we went through this in the last video, the requirements, the past student examples, but the important thing to, to get done on on this Monday work from home class is your black vector type solution. So we start with an image of your spot illustration from assignment five, and we're going to put text over it, under it, around it, in a way that makes it into an interesting, compelling image, right? Like you see all of these illustrations that have text added to them, all of these illustrations that have text added to them. This illustration that has, has a title flag, you know, text added to it. So the three things you need for a poster are type, your illustration, and a background. And we're going to do a background with a border. So, so far, I have my inspirations. I'm inspired by cereal box kind of cartoon characters and mascots. I've come up with the the kind of words I want to go with my illustration. So Nighthawk Serial, right? Maybe I'll have this little star icon too. And I've already done a little bit of what's called text blocking, where I, I think of the shape, kind of this fun, kind of like the Pac-Man serial, the reverse of the Count Chocula, kind of like this Dino Bones, you know, serial. This is a, a process by this artist I give you in my example, who just came up with this commission, making their own breakfast cereal with a spot illustration, vector spot illustration, line art, and then coloring with that title flag. So that's basically what I'm what I'm going for for here. And then I started to look for typefaces that might work. Now we're doing everything with freeware and I'm doing everything just remotely on just my laptop with, with a uh, trackpad. I don't even have a mouse. So what I'm gonna do is just walk you through this process. So the first step is to take my, my PSD or to create a PSD with my spot illustration. So the first thing I might do is just download this little blocking sketch without the background right now because that background was just kind of a filler all right now that i have that downloaded i'm moving that onto my desktop i always like to work from the desktop and i'm going to open up photo p we're going to use our two freeware browser-based softwares photo p to figure out kind of blocking and layout and then vector.com v-e-c-t-r.com to actually make our black type. So the free vector graphics editor, right? And I'm just gonna create, well, you'll see, I'll open a file once I have my blocking sketch. So if I open this up, this is what's called a type blocking sketch. And if you wanna make it really clear, you don't actually need to draw your type. You just need to draw, you can do it digitally, you can do it by hand, you just need to draw the basic kind of shape around the type that you think will look good with your spot illustration. And that can always be slightly modified and changed, but I'm thinking I want my, very true to breakfast cereals, I want my spot illustration to be underneath my text and maybe overlap it slightly. So this is my text blocking and my spot illustration is underneath it, right? That's why inspirations help a lot. <clears throat> You'll see on all of these, the text always runs above. And some are more successful than others. So I'm gonna try to make mine look really, really interesting, really successful. I actually think this one is a better design than most I've seen. I like this overlap of the illustration on the text. I like the slight texture and highlights in the text. 
These are all things that, that I might use for my Nighthawk serial. Okay, so now that we have it open in Photoshop, all I'm going to do, let's move it down a little bit. Turn off auto select. All I'm going to do is bring that sketch. Once you figure out your the shape of your type blocking or your text blocking, you're going to bring that in to vector.com and we're going to start to make vector type with it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to make a new layer, block out the figure here. Yeah, I'll keep the figure. It's fine. All right, I'm going to save this, export it out of Photopea as a JPEG, and I'm just going to call it my text blocking sketch, just as a JPEG. Okay, now I'm going to bring that to the desktop out of downloads. This is works on a PC or on a Mac. And that is not actually required for the assignment, this text blocking sketch. But it's a good thing to post. It's a good thing so you know what you're trying to accomplish. You will need a sense of the shape of your artwork before you can make your vector type. Now, vector.com, even since we used it last on our logo assignment, has added a bunch of features that you don't want to worry about, like AI features a vectorizer, but all of these require membership. We're just going to use its, its regular basic things that don't require any membership, and I'm going to say open file. And then I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to open that text blocking sketch, just like we did with our logo sketches. Now, I'm going to open up my layers in vector.com. This will give us more chance to understand this program and to understand black shape vectors. And I'm going to select that image and then take its opacity and properties down to about, let's do 40%. Then I'm going to lock it. So this shows me the kind of type I want. Now I have a few options now. With my pen tool, I could start drawing this type right away. I want it to be kind of bubbly. I want it to be friendly, cartoonish. So I can start drawing type using these curves, clicking and dragging. When I don't want to extend a curve out of a curve, I hold down Command if I'm on a Mac, Control if I'm on a PC, I drag that handle back. Oops. And then I have a straight, and then I can continue that curve. Hold down Command, drag that handle back. Set my next curve. On and on and on. I'm going to use the default curves when I can, when I think they can be useful in these bubble letters, like so. But then hold down Command, bring that handle back. When I need to control the curve from just one side. Actually, in Command Z, if you want to go backwards. Maybe I do want to use that curve. There we go. So all these defaults are to help help it be as smooth and as even as possible. And then, of course, you can always adapt it afterwards. So this is the option of completely designing your own type from scratch. 
Now, before I end and close the path, I'm going to go close to the last anchor point and set my curve. Otherwise, it won't let me. And then finish by clicking on that final anchor point. Okay, now let's look at the properties. It has a, a one pixel um, stroke or border to it. I'm going to turn that off and instead I'm going to turn on the color and I want the color to be for this exercise just black. Right. And now I'm not so worried about my sketch because it's already fitting in the space I want. I want to just double click it so I can see those anchor points. I can use Command Plus to zoom in. I'm trying to expand my screen here. Ah. Ah. <laughs> the trackpad using the two fingers. A little frustrating sometimes so yeah let's see I have not set an account so I probably should because this will help remember the work I do so if I make that mistake again accidentally hit back I won't lose Hmm. How do I log in here? Here we go, account. I don't want to delete my account. Jeez, they've made this complicated. All right. So we're going to do it this way. I'm going to say open file. I'm going to try to be careful and save my work as I go. Bring in your sketch. You dim your image. Freeware, of course, is great because it's free, but you have to, you have to work with the limitations of it. I'm going to shrink the tools a little bit so I have more space to work. So you can use command zero to fit it all on screen. Command minus to zoom out. Command plus to zoom in. And you can lock under layers here. You can lock your different, your sketch, and then you can create with the pen tool. I'll just do something simple with like with the eye. You can create your letter forms. But that's just one way to go. So let's say that's one letter form. I can also use my shape tools like I did with the morning class to create the letter form. And then of course I can use this transform box around the shape tools to rotate it, to tilt it. And then I set the properties. So the property you want is black for the color and no fill. Same thing for these. I'm going to make it just turn off the border, the stroke, turn on the color and set it to be black, just the default black. Now to edit it, you double click it and you can move those anchor points around. If you double click the anchor point, you can change it from curves to straights and then you can use the cornering tool. These little circles to round it out right or i can double click it turn it to curves and then use command to alter the curve individually on each side there's just a whole lot you can do i can click on the path and create a new anchor point and I can set curves on that and then use command. So you have a, a lot of control to play with, right? If I want to round it out here more, I'll set an anchor point and then just drag it out and then play with this curve, holding down command just to play with one side of it. So on and on. Okay. 
The other way 